Hi there, Carlos here from Life in Silver. Last time I talked, I showed you a little bit of my cameras, but I didn't go too deeply in the difference between them. So I would like to use this new video to explain a little bit more in detail. And also I made an entry on my blog, Life in Silver 2. Well, the name is Life in Silver. And I wrote down some major difference between different kinds of film mostly the most popular and the ones that are still in use nowadays like 35 millimeters, 120 and plates so stay tuned and I hope you enjoy the descriptions in the next section first of all I would like to talk about uh, point and shot cameras point and shot cameras were the most easy to use cameras around they were marketed to all kind of well, to any person who would like to take photos, uh, they these cameras most of the time has a fixed lens and a fixed speed and a fixed aperture. So these cameras depend highly on the flash to get good exposures. Sorry about that guy; <laughs> it was singing on the street. So as you can see, well. These last cameras were made all about plastic because if I, I'm going to show you a different camera later and it was also marketed as a point and shot but as you can see, well, everything is made out of plastic everything and even has uh, marketing proposals inside here I hope you can see it, it says use only Kodak film there it's hard to make the camera see this and as you can see, well, uh, it's very easy to use. You just wind the, the film, you press the button, and it exposures the film. It doesn't have a lot of science, this camera. But with time, uh, some brands, even Kodak, this is one, a Polaroid camera, um, made more sophisticated cameras with autofocus, like this one. It can... As you can see, this this one has a red light that uh, starts when you ask it to make a pre-exposure measure. This one also has the flash indicator. If I shoot, it, sh it also fires the flash. This camera also has a date printer, so you can make uh, tell the camera to print dates on each exposure if you want to keep track where when you took the photos and with the difference with the other camera this one has, this one has automatic um, winding of the film each time I take the photo this roll start to rotating and it carries the film with it and also this camera has two um, special contacts back in here so the older cans from film, as you can see this one, has this silver and black um, coating. This silver and black coating was understood by these two uh, electric nodes and it would tell the camera which ISO, ISO or whatever you can call it, uh, is the film speed. So the camera knows when to fire flash, when to no fire flash, or well, you can force to fire the flash with this button. Um, Another interesting thing about this camera is that it has a panoramic uh, feature which is just uh, a shape. I will show you how when I enter the panoramic these two guys go uh, like well, widening the frame so you can achieve like some movie style uh, photos with it. Okay. This was also a point-and-shot camera, but back in the 60s, 70s. As you can see, it's very, very far away from the other two plastic ones. The camera is made out of metal. I don't know which metal is. And a very few plastic parts, some leather, leather kind textures. And well, it is also a little bit more heavy than the other two. Difference with the other two cameras is that you need to know a little bit about photography. As you can see, if this thing focus, you will see you have different 
uh, aperture settings and speed settings. Even you have bulb setting. So this was a very, very easy to handle camera, but at the time was the common and it has a film on it. So I just ruined that frame. <laughs> I forgot it. And well, this camera doesn't have anything to do with electronics. That was a downside with it because to know you the exposure, you had to have a paper exposure or you need to have and hand exposure or whatever you need or well experience itself so you can make various uh, photos well exposed as with as as long as this camera doesn't tell you how this is going to be the light settings on the on the film uh, so the only interesting thing is that this camera has this dial that makes you remind you black and white tungsten balanced film and daylight balance film for color, both this. This was black and white. It has its counter, it has the, the knob with the screw to put the remote. And uh, well, that's all. It's a very cute camera. It's also, it's also made by Kodak. I hope you can see it. And in the small letters it says it's made in Germany. So, well. As you can see, manufacturers came a long way from making their stuff in Europe and then making their stuff in China. <laughs> At last but not least, well, are the famous SLR cameras. SLR cameras are well known and around photography for being like the trademark of pro photographers, even if it this doesn't true because, well, it is like the most used camera around photographers as you can see well the great advantage of SLR cameras is that you can change the objective the lens you put on the camera if you see these cameras had the chance to put well at least from the same brand most of the time different kinds of ob objectives or lenses and these give you the opportunity to make a lot of creative things instead of just portraits or landscapes and well and so on. the other feature or great feature about these cameras are the customization in in the case you have you can put some flashes they have a very well balanced center for tripod even for making uh, bigger landscapes uh, well these cameras the older models have the preset settings like if you alone would say that uh, in which well the camera with this small processor knows what to do in each kind of uh, in each setting and well the uh, automatic the manual settings well the manual settings are just one but the other three ones like P, T, V, A, V let you choose uh, freely how you want to be to make the exposure so well that's the advantage of SLR cameras older cameras which uh, well I don't have uh, are most of them are manual only manual only means that uh, you have to know how to use them so uh, if you need to know how to use a camera left a comment and I make some videos explaining how to use uh, camera like this one or like the Kodak one that's behind there and let's go on if you have noticed uh, I haven't talked about any other film size that's because I don't own any other film size camera so if you have any doubt about any specific uh, kind of film please let me know in the comments here on the blog and now I'm gonna tell you and show you what are you going to be needing after you take some photos uh, about taking your photos well uh, I will tell you about how to use your camera properly the next the next video so in this case this is just some kind of to prepare you to what kind of things are you gonna be needing for the purposes of this tutorial well I'm gonna be at the start teaching uh, about how to shoot on black and white because well having those chemicals and having the stuff to develop and to work with them are more easy to get are 
even common to find well in any photographic supply store and the chemistry isn't that hard to prepare or, ha or hard to to use so well in my personal taste I prefer Ilford this brand that brand well um, compared to Kodak Kodak is still a good brand but I find mm, more balance in the use of Ilford mostly in the Delta series of films the Delta films of series are the professional film uh, from Ilford but in this case if you don't want to spend a lot of money you can buy the other Ilford movies or films no movies are other things films and you, ha you are going to have a great result with them in the next well my next tip or well, at least my tip is you to buy a bulk film bulk film came uh, in a as the package say it's well it's, uh, here it is it's one f 100 feet I hope this can 100 feet uh, film uh, well it has the size the height 35 millimeters and uh, by 30.5 meters if you don't like to use imperial system but you're gonna be needing a lot of empty canisters with at least a film strip or you can find some uh, uh, openable canisters that you can fill with them I'm gonna teach you how to fill this and uh, well and after you have both the bulk the empty canisters or you have a lot of these and well this is going to be like uh, a chicken and the egg kind of thing because if you haven't shot film and you haven't developed it's very rare that you will have some of these without any kind of film you're gonna be needing to find a bulk film lover this this device is make or is made well to load film with, with it uh, I found this in a swap meet in San Diego it cost me well the seller didn't know what 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 he had and it was a surprise to find it it's very well it's very well conserved if you tell me that it has all the pieces even had its manual as you can see very old manual and the more surprising thing is made on Chicago Illinois so well things are things have changed a lot since then so let me start with this small tutorial about how to use this thing so for this tutorial what are we going to need is a pair of scissors uh, an empty magazine with a uh, strip outside or if you bought one of these that are empty well an empty of these and if you are gonna be using one of these you are gonna need a little bit strip of film that doesn't work anymore the bulk film the bulk film loader and some uh, masking tape or something magic tape or whatever you like to call this so if you're going to be using one of these well these ones open pretty easily you just uh, with your nail or with whatever with your fingers you can take out the, one of the one of the covers and take out the spool the spool has uh, and in the middle has a uh, um, an opening with teeth this teeth has a way well it's a thicker to the less thicker part and you have to pass film through it and how to do that well you're gonna pick your non-juice film and well I'm gonna cut this one down because it has some perforations I've made when I dry it up so I cut it I cut it the most straight way and I'm going to cut one, two, three, four, 
first pocket holes and the fourth I'm going to make a cut trying to make something like this and I do it I do the same in the other side it's gonna be like a town like this one uh, try to make it uh, more to the middle of the film so just be careful and you're gonna see where the the small part from the teeth are going well you pass your film treat like this one you pass it it's gonna look like something like that you can see and you're going to bend the other part and bend it and make it make sure it enters in a small part in this side so the film cannot be detached you won't need this long uh, film well the next step just make sure you you can spool it a little bit wind it sorry and enter it make sure close it and that's all you're gonna be needing um, at least three one two three or four maybe but three is better you won't be you can use that again and you have something like this one you see and you have secured it very tight okay well in this case this bulk film uh, box is empty but what you are going to find inside what you are going to find inside is a black bag this black bag is going to be containing your film this bag is light proof so the next step I'm going to show you has to be done in a total darkness room so just to know you how to use the film, the, the bulk film loader I'm gonna be using light but something like this is going to be in the side, well a bigger one it has a core and has the film uh, rounded with it so these next steps are going to be made or at least by you have to be made in total darkness so you have to be very uh, very calm and if you don't feel uh, like how to say it uh, confident about it don't try it because you could spoil, spoil like uh, 60 70 dollars of film just by mm, being nervous about it okay so remember this is going to be on total darkness you're gonna be opening your box and inside your box is going to be the film inside the bag the film most of the times has a little tape uh, making it just to do not um, like unwind it itself okay the bulk film at least this model has a central knob this knob you can screw it like this one and you have a cover this cover it has a trap uh, trap light so in total darkness I repeat this very often because it's very important you're going to take your film you're going to use the center to, to align with the core of the film because it's made of plastic and you will going to find you need to find the edge of it of your film you're going to need to be without this cover but so, and you're going to with your mirror touch you need to make it pass through an opening in, in here inside as you can see film is stretching out from here to this point and so on you need to 
put the cover again with careful because you could uh, crash the film and put the screw again okay since then until then or well, you can put this cover on again it doesn't matter when you have your bulk film inside with the knob tightly pressed since then you can uh, open again uh, open turn the lights on again okay maybe you're not going able to see it or maybe with yes here it says close and open close means that as long as the cover is in that side light won't go uh, anywhere inside so your film is safe but if you put it ah uh, well you have to put this thing in but when you put it to the open it's the moment when you can spool your film inside so let's see how that is done well you let it in the closed position and you open this uh, you're gonna need a bit of, well, or of film you remember it and take a little bit of, of this so make sure you paste it this way okay with a little bit uh, going off the edges and well as long well this is demonstration this film doesn't work anymore you're gonna take uh, a piece of the film that is inside and gonna align it you have to align You have to align it this way and bend and be sure to press tight on the on the sides and press again okay this way it must look like this we're going to open this knob let it down and push a little bit this because the film got a little bit too too far away so when you made that when you paste you close the cover you close the secure and you move this to the open position so as you can see here I have this knob with numbers I'm going to put it in the zero position. Okay, I'm going to press this down and and roll it. Uh, if you see this thing in cloak side way, as you can see, as long as I keep turning enough, the numbers are starting to count. And well, the numbers tell you how many photos are inside the magazine or the canister. Normal, uh, normal loads are made about like 36. So as maybe you won't be able to see it very clearly, but well, the film got over. The idea of this is to wind it until you put it to the number of exposures you want per roll. The most um, common common number of exposures are 36. You can make it uh, bigger or smaller, but making them bigger is not very like uh, it's not very recommendable because the spirals like this one for developing are made f just to hold a 36 photos uh, film. Uh, you can make it smaller, that's no problem. You can make it 12, 24, 36, 10, whatever, whichever, whichever number you want. But why I 
told you about uh, bulk film. Well, bulk film is the cheapest uh, way to to have film. Well, once you have ended, uh, if you have a bigger spool, you have to take out the one you wind it. Take it, take it out, take it out, and you just have to cut cut the film, and that's all. Uh, and why I told you about this? Well, uh, bulk film is cheaper than buying film in little boxes. Uh, uh, a bulk can make you between 20 or 19, 36 exposure films. Um, well, films. And it costs you like the half of each film you got. So I hope you find this useful. Um, the only kind of film you're gonna find in bulk are black and white films. Uh, color and slide films are not any any way available in this kind of of selling product or calling some some kind. Uh, next time I will talk to you about exposure, on how to take photos once you have both. Uh, your own films or you have uh, made them like this one it's just and don't forget to label them it's very important to know which what thing is inside this this guy because it all will depend on what kind of film is in the can I hope you enjoyed this and see you next time uh, uh, even if I forget it, uh, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to to go to my blog. Uh, see ya.